this will be eye-opening. Which of these three kicks fail? What if I told you all those three kicks were actually the same, but the difference was what was around them? So then, why kick one and two felt like they failed? Let me explain. Let's say this ugly thing is our kick. We will have an initial click that is followed by a body, and finally this long part will be our tail. What is the meaning of all of these? If we draw the frequency chart over here, the division would look even more obvious. The click will sit very high on the spectrum and it is often used to cut through the mix. And then the body will give the character of the kick. It can be thumpy, it could be aggressive, smooth, hollow. The character of the kick really comes from this area. And finally, the tail often sits between 200 to 100 Hz and gives us the sub end of the kick. These three different parts of the kick is almost like a pieces of puzzle. If any of these don't sit right in the mix, then we will feel like the kick is failing. I think the best way to understand is taking a look at working examples. And I want to start with the click. How do you decide what type of click that you want to have your track? When you're deciding the click on your kick, the main factor is really the high end of your track. Listen to this one. Only thing that we have really is this small tiny hi-hat sound. Hence, obviously, we don't need really super clicky kick over here. A smoother kick would fit the track more. So the, my first kick is this one. Not much click. And my second kick is exactly the same, but I create more click just adding distortion to the high end. We have much more going on. The one with a lot of click won't work. Track is not suitable for it. Original. So remember, the click is there to help your kick pop in the mix. If it don't need to pop in the mix, you really don't need much click. But hi-hat is not the only defining factor when it comes to click. Let me show you this one. Yeah, a lot of things happening. So I can straight ahead say that we need something clicky here if we really want the kick to pop in the mix. Now, I did the same thing the first kick good amount of click here and a second kick, the click is taken away. Now here, how much difference just a simple click makes in a mix. Without click, we almost don't hear the kick. This is of course extreme example, right? You are really this busy in the mix, but whenever you think about the click, Think about the high end of your track. A lot of things going on on high end, you probably need a good transient click in your kick. Nothing going on high end, then forget about the click. Now here comes the real pro trick. Most of the tracks evolves and many producers think that they can't touch the kick in a track. What you can do, the places that you don't have high end, you can just slightly cut down your click if you have too much click. That will give your listeners a more pleasant experience and gradually bring in the click while getting busier and busier mix. This can really level up your kick game. If you're enjoying the video up to now, please consider like and subscribe. When it comes to body of your kick, the most important thing is your personal decisions, like how you like your kick, plus how much main instruments that you have in your song. The body of your kick will really define the character of your song. For example, if you are going for aggressive sound, get an aggressive kick. If you're going for smoother sound, get more hollow kick. From the theory, let's do a test. I want you to listen to this loop and decide what type of body your kick should have, all right? We have a very aggressive lead sound, driving low and we have hats as well. So theory says that we need something that have a good present body. If you take a look at our kick example, the first one, full aggressive kick, the second one, 
almost the same kick but it's a bit hollow so the mid part the body of the kick is a bit taking out and the third one is very smooth type of kick not really much character or aggressiveness in the body so from the theory we could say that probably the first one would work best and then probably the second one and third one would be absolutely horrible let's take a look as expected working fine second one doesn't get that aggressive feel and the third one absolutely horrible so i think this is a very clear example on how to pick a body of your kick now the pro tip the big mistake that producers make they actually select the kick while they are designing their low end like this don't hear the rest of the track many producers will tend to go less aggressive kicks because there's nothing there so remember that you can always change your kick later stages in your track if your track gets more aggressive change your kick or at least change the body of your kick if you are wondering where to get good kicks take a look at my smooth kicks volume 2 if you want to have these smooth silky kicks this is probably one of the best if not the best one and the final part the tail if you are a subscriber of this channel you probably already know how you pick the tail of your kick because i say this over and over and over again and it's one of the most obvious ones so the tail of your kick is your sub end the most important thing of your kick tail is one if you have a key and two the length of your tail the length defines your baseline here is my kick and here is my sub bass. You see that my sub bass is almost non-existent where the kick hits because we have all the kick over here. The way you often do this one is you just side in your sub bass the kick. When the kick hits, your sub bass ducks. That means that the areas that you have kick sub tails, then you don't have a sub bass at all. So if you are going for playful sub bass and the groove of your sub bass is important, go for shorter tail kicks. If you want to feel the drive and power from your kick, you can pick the longer kicks but then you have to side chain your sub bass so they don't exist exactly at the same time or like this one here they should be really ducked on the volume levels and one thing to remember if you have a longer kick something like this the key of the tail will get very audible some kicks won't have a clear pitch this kick over here the length of the each wave changes so the pitch goes down so there's no sustained pitch but this one, the length stays all the way same, so we can hear the pitch of the kick. Dun. Do you hear it? That is the pitch. So if you have a very obvious pitch in your kick and it has a long tail, be careful to tune it to your key of your song. You can tune it the root key, the third or the fifth. All these three would actually work fine. If you want to learn more about low end and kicks, I have more videos over here. Take a look.